Today, we're going to show you how to set up a car battery to provide power for your gas furnace, power for your lights in the event of a power outage. We're going to set up this changeover switch to toggle between the main power from the grid and the power from the battery. When the switch is in position 0, none of the contact points are connected. When the switch is set to position 1, contact node number 1 is connected to number 2. Number 5 is connected to number 6 and number 9 is connected to number 10. And when the switch is in position 2, contact node number 3 is connected to number 4. Number 7 is connected to number 8 and number 11 is connected to number 12. For the furnace power output side, we want to jumper the nodes between 2 and 4, 6 and 8, 10 and 12. This way the furnace will get its power from either the switch in position 1 or 2. And here are the jumper wires between nodes number 2 and 4, 6 and 8, 10 and 12. And we'll turn off the furnace power to begin the installation. We'll mount the change of a switch cover on the side of the furnace. Even though the power is turned off, we want to double check to make sure there's no loose hot wire anywhere in the system. And this tool will beep when it detects a hot wire. In this case, there's no hot wire detected and we are clear to go for the next step. These two wires are from the main power supply, and these are the furnace wires. And this is the ground wire from the main power. Shielding the ground wire is an extra step, but we would like to separate all the wires from the power main input from the inverter wires. This way, the sensitive electronic components in the inverter are protected from any possible power surge from the main line. And we'll need to install a new ground wire to the furnace. Once again, here are the three wires from the main power supply. And here are the furnace wires. We need to extend all three wires from the main input to reach the change of a switch box. And we've connected the main power hot wire to the extended hot wire. Neutral to neutral and ground to ground. These are the furnace wires. These wires are from the inverter. And these three wires are from the main power supply. And we'll connect all the wires according to the schematic. Then we'll use a flathead screwdriver to torque everything down nice and tight. We're going to use continuity tests to make sure everything is connected properly. With the switch in position 0, we should not get any kind of reading for continuity. In position 2, we should get a reading from the hot wire and the neutral wire because they are now connected to the circuit board of the furnace. We should also get a reading from ground to ground.
in position one we should not get any reading because the wires from the inverter are completely isolated from the main power line Now that we passed all tests, we can turn back the main power supply. When the switch is in position 1, it should go to the main power supply. We've just cut off the power supply to simulate a power outage situation. Here we got a battery connected to an inverter to provide power to the furnace. The 1500 watt inverter has no issue providing power to the furnace. The inverter is currently connected to a deep cycle battery. Unlike the traditional car battery, deep cycle batteries provide a long steady stream of power. Traditional car battery provide a massive amount of power in short burst, but the power does not last as long as the deep cycle batteries. But in an emergency situation, you can use either battery to power the inverter. And this is the overview of our system for the complete setup. The inverter cable runs along the wall and around the hot water heater. The inverter is on standby mode for the day. Typically, we turn it off. We got a four battery bank that is always being maintained by a charger. The charger is currently displaying 100% and it should turn itself off after a few minutes. With this setup, we should have several days of continuous power supply. But if the power outage lasts longer than several days, we can use a generator to recharge the batteries. Or we can run the inverter straight from a running car. But if you're up to a fun project, you can set up a lawn mower to recharge the battery bank. See the link below for this mower project. Well, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit that juicy like button and hit subscribe with notification on if you haven't done so. And thank you for watching.